Ladies and gentlemen, today I saw on um, some news feeds that there are people out there talking about people who know their rights, their common law rights, their constitutional rights, and they're being branded as sovereign citizens, which is an American organization, got nothing to do with Australia. But these media geniuses and the boys and girls who are purported to uphold the law, who don't even know the law, um, are running around looking for or sovereign citizens, and I will show you how that is an absolute oxymoron. So let me share the screen, let me bring up my PowerPoint, and let me open that up. So here's my, my little Australia screen, my home, my people, my place. I love this country. I hate what's happening to it, and I hate it in a spiritual sense of what's happening to it because what's going on in this country is nothing more than spiritual warfare at a very very high level is my opinion what you think of it is entirely up to you let me share this with you this the act to constitute the commonwealth of australia 9th of july 1900 that was in the uk an act of parliament in the united kingdom whereas the people of new south wales victoria south australia queensland and tasmania humbly relying on the blessings of Almighty God, have agreed to unite in one indissoluble federal commonwealth under the crown of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Ireland and under the constitution hereby established. Let me add to that right there. And no other. I will say it again. And no other constitution. We did not agree to unite under any other constitution period. Now, the media would divide the people of Australia because that's what they're good at. And they will push fear into decent people for the act of knowing you're standing. We've seen this over the last three years. We've been called all sorts of names only to be proven right. And here we are again, knowing our lawful standing under the constitution. There are good people being trashed by the paid media snipers, and that's all they are is gutless snipers. They hide behind their corporate banner. Don't let them do this. Fear is the weapon of the gutless. You understand this? They are trying to, to shut down what they call the freedom movement. Fear is the weapon of the gutless. Cowards, yellow bellies. Got it? Right, moving right along. Education time. On page 988 of the annotated version of the Constitution, subsection 481, and I haven't got it written in there, it should be 128, section 128. It's all about the referendums. And it says here, a constitution is a charter of government. It is a deed of trust containing covenants between, now listen to the words, sovereign community and its individual units. Get that? The Constitution says that every man and woman in this country is a sovereign. It is not a terrorist organization. We, the people of Australia, under the Constitution, are sovereign. It says so in a couple of other places. But I just thought I'd bring that in there because it introduces trust law to the government. Well, well they're not the government, the corporation. Moving right along. What is a sovereign? one possessing or held to possess supreme political power. Where does the supreme political power reside in our constitution? It resides in the people. We are the sovereignty in that constitution. Let's have a look at citizen. Citizen, a native or naturalized person who owes an allegiance to a government, right? Now, we cannot be a sovereign and a citizen at the same time. Those in the media and those in the police force and those in the parliament and those university professors who've done a lot of psychological training, you need to get your shit right because you got it all wrong. You don't even know what our constitution says, you pack of wallies. Anyhow, moving right along. So what government? Oh, well, the one in parliament. 
Well, I'll tell you what, I'll, um, I'll do the video again later on to show you that we haven't had a prime minister recite the proper lawful oath for decades. Well, just another story. So what government are we talking about here? Well, let's have a look. Now, this is the final reports of the Constitutional Commission of 1988, Volume 2. Now, these treasonous political parties are still trying to get the Queen of Australia recognised as they've been using the Queen of Australia since 1973, when they got rid of the Great Seal unlawfully. But never mind. Media people. Let me show you something you, you might find interesting. I don't know whether the truth has any bearing on life in your world. It does in ours. All right. A bill. An act to alter the Commonwealth of Australia Constitution by omitting obsolete words and so as to recognise the Queen of Australia. Okay, pay attention, people. And it's not just the media. I want you to know you're standing. I want you to know what's really going on be it enacted by the Parliament of the Commonwealth of Australia with the approval of the electors as required by the Constitution as follows. That is an absolute and total lie. The approval of the electors as required by the Constitution means that there was a referendum. There's never been a referendum on any of this stuff. So this is just lies, deception and treason. And I say treason in the full meaning of the word and those who are convicted of it should hang by the neck publicly until they are dead for the damage they have caused this nation. This act may be cited as a constitution alteration, Commonwealth of Australia Constitution Act 1988. Omission of enacting words. Now listen to what they're wanting to take out or what they did take out of our constitution. The Commonwealth of Australia Constitution Act is altered by omitting the words, be it therefore enacted by the Queen's Most Excellent Majesty, by and with the advice and consent of the Lord Spiritual and Lords Temporal and Commons in this present Parliament assembled and by the authority of the same as follows. Do you hear that? The Queen's Most Excellent Majesty had been taken out of our Parliament, out of our Constitution by Gough Whitlam. God, I, ho I hope he burns in hell forever. An act to extend the Queen's successes. Section two of the Commonwealth of Australia Constitution Act is altered by omitting the words, the United Kingdom, and substituting the word Australia. None of this had any referendums. Nobody even knew it was going on except the Prime Minister, a handful of others, and every Premier in the country and every attorney general in the country and the governor general of the time. Pay attention. A bill to, to alter the constitution as required, again, with the approval of the electors, bull, didn't happen, blah, right? This act may be cited as the Oaths and Affirmation of Allegiance Act. So now they're attacking the oath. So when the Prime Minister and the members of Parliament swear an oath, they got rid of the lawful oath and they changed it. The Constitution is altered by omitting from the schedule there to the words of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Ireland and substituting the words of Australia. This is how they brought in a republic whereby they pay no attention to the people of this country. That's why you've spent thousands of dollars on letters and documents and stamps and paper and sent them to all manner of parliaments and they have not responded to you one bit because they are not a legitimate parliament. They are not a de jure government. Moving right along, an act to alter the constitution to empower the parliament of the Commonwealth to make laws with respect to successions to the throne. All right, okay, wow. And again, with the approval of the electors, now, nah. Didn't happen. I was around in 88. I'm that old. I can remember it, right? Didn't happen. In actual fact, 88 was the first year I went to America. We went to Hawaii. Legislative powers of the parliament, section 51 of the constitution is altered by inserting the following paragraphs after paragraph 38. 38A, succession to the throne and regency in the sovereignty of Australia. 
do you see what they've done? You see, we are the sovereign people under the legitimate de jure constitution. We are operating under an unlawful, tyrannous group of people and the media, I'm going to send this to every media outlet I can find, and I'll bet you London to a brick. They, they're like ostriches, except they'll stick their head up each other's butt and walk around. This, this is a good one. This is very good. Yeah. <laughs> Part eight, miscellaneous alterations. The Constitution is altered by section 58 and substituting the following section. Now, listen to this. Assent to bills. Now, this is how the bills get passed. They normally have to go to the Governor General, who is the Queen's representative, and either he does pass them or he passes it on to the Queen for her to give her assent. That is what a constitutional monarchy by law must do. Listen to this. Subject to Section 2. When a proposed law is passed by both houses of the Parliament, it is presented to the Governor-General for the Queen's assent. The Governor-General shall, on being so advised by the Federal Executive Council, assent to it in the Queen's name. Did you get that? The Governor General's bought and paid for. He's a puppet of the executive. He's a puppet. Now, if you don't have a legitimate Governor General, you cannot swear in a legitimate parliament. They can say whatever oath they like. He doesn't care. And that's evident in the videos that we've got. If we don't have a legitimate parliament, I'll guarantee you London to a brick, we don't have a legitimate court. And we don't have legitimate states. And even the High Court under Susan Keifel is illegitimate is a treason on this nation. You don't believe this was real? Dear Attorney General, look at the addresses in here, right? Professor Enid Campbell, the Honorable, my God, E.G. Whitlam, right? The Honorable Sir Rupert Hamer. Come on, people. This is the evidence of the treason and you are worried about carrying on your, your freedom run? This should give you more steam in your bucket than you can handle, right? We, the educated people of Australia, did not agree to unite under the criminals that have usurped our great nation by fraud and deception. We are the sovereign people. Every man and woman in this nation, we are sovereign. We are not traitors. Dear media, we, the sovereign electors of legitimate parliaments, of the Commonwealth of Australia. Is it at all possible that now that you have absolute proof of both sedition and treason, you might actually report or investigate the real criminals, or will you continue your blatant protection of their treason? Your actions are your words, and your words are your flags. We'll see which flag you raise. Will you demonize me, the messenger, or will you go after the criminals? Our words and actions raise a flag of disdain for their fraud, their deceit, their treachery, and their treason. If you wish to cast aspersions on those in Australia who are disgusted by those character traits, please go right ahead. My name's Tim DeWire, and I will no longer put up with anybody trying to brand people who love their country and stand for freedom, who know what their standing is in the common law and under the constitution of this country. I will not stand by idly and let them be, a, be attacked by gutless snipers hiding in the media. Come on, people, stand up. Withdraw all your consent. We're going to push this through and we're going to push it hard. This is a great country. It's just got mongrel dogs at the top of it, taking orders from the most disgusting people God has ever had the misfortune to put breath into in this country, in this world. There's been some evil people in this world, but none so much as walk it today. My name is Tim DeWire. I am from South Australia. I do love this country and I will do what I can to A, protect it and B, educate those to who they really are and what this country really stands for. We are the sovereign people.